Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16, I'm reading. And behold, one came and said unto him, to Jesus, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He's asking question, what must I do to get Jannah, heaven? Verse 17, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? What are you calling me good for? There is none good except one, that is God. He is the only one who deserves to be called good. Don't call me even good. But if thou wilt enter into life, means if you want life eternal, if you want Jannah, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Means whatever was taught to you, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. So whatever you were told to do, keep the commandments. I'm asking my Christian brethren that if I was that Jew, and this is the answer I got. So I said, right, alhamdulillah. I'm trying to, inshallah, I will not commit adultery, I will not steal, I will not kill. Will I enter Jannat or not? This is the master says, if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. That's all. So I said, look, all right, alhamdulillah. If that is all that is required, like somebody, you go and ask some alim. He said, look, what must I do to go to Jannah? He said, look, you keep on praying five times a day. Right? If you think that he's authorized to tell you that, so Jannah is for you. You keep on praying five times a day, Jannah is for you. Jesus says, keep the commandments. I said, right, I keep the commandments. There was no question of anybody dying for anybody's sins. Keep the commandments. Follow laws and commandments of God. And don't call me good. There's only one good. That is God. But the Christians, you know, they are going to the extremes. You read the literature. Or when they confront you, these born again, they will tell you, they want to corner you into this place. Says, either, they say, they use the word either. Last night, I don't know, the night before, in the city hall, I was using the word either. Either this or that. Either this or that. They're giving you alternative. So either way, you get caught. So either Jesus is God or a liar. This is Christian literature. They will ask you, says, look, either Jesus is God or he's a liar. Can any Muslim say he was a liar? No. So he must be God. I'm asking, is the word liar, is it an opposite of the word God? Is it an antonym of God in any language? The opposite word for God, is it a liar? No. But now you see, they put it to you in a corner, and now you as, a, as we as Muslims, we can't we say he was a true messenger of God. We know he would never lie. That's why I say, if he said he's God, then he must be God. I'm prepared to accept it. Show me where. The Quran says he didn't make such a claim, and the Bible says the same. He never made any such claim. Either another. Either Jesus is God or a lunatic. I say, when is lunacy, lunatic, an opposite of God? So, are you, any Muslim, can you say Jesus was a lunatic? No. So you are caught. So you must say he's God. Or, another example, either Jesus is God or an imposter. Look at this. Either this or that. Why should they be, they say, this man here is either black or white. But between black and white, there are endless shades of gray. We know that. Among us, look at us. Endless shades, you know, we are. <laughs> Why must it be, he must be black or he must be white? This hat I'm wearing is either white or black. Couldn't I be wearing a gray one? Or a red one? Or a pink one? Why must it be this or that? But this is a type of sickness. You see, they have developed a sickness. So Allah says, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ Whosoever says that Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary, is God, they are making kufr. It's an act of blasphemy. It's a treason against Allah. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ But Christ said, يَا بَنِي إِسْرَعِيلُ O children of Israel, O Jews, لَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ Worship Allah. رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ Who is my Lord and your Lord. Whoever will associate anyone with Allah, Allah will make Jannat haram for them, no heaven for them. And the fire of hell will be the dwelling place. And for the wrongdoers, there will be no one to help. 
Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 75. Now, you come across these people in the flesh, learned people. And I give you an experience of mine. We had a Reverend Dr. Morris, the head of the Presbyterian Church in Canada. He was brought over by the Department of Information. You see, our government is bringing VIPs, the very important people from all over the world. And they, at their expense, government expense. And they look after them, they feed them, and they take them around, show them your Belleville University. He said, look at this, what we have done for the colored people. Have you got one like this in your country? For the blacks? He says, no. Take them to Durban Westville. It's a monumental building. So do you see this? This is what we have done for the Indians. Look at it. Have you got one like that in your country? The guy says, no. He takes him to the University of Zululand. Masterpieces. University of the North. Masterpieces of construction. Millions they spent. Our government. Show them around. He said, look at Soweto. One million people we have housed. We know it's not perfect. Look, we are not perfect. Rome was not built in a day. Give us a little break. You know, things will come right. Now, when these guys, when they go back, they will go back telling the people, say, look, South Africa is not as bad as what people make it out to be. And if a person can say that, our government is happy. Just that person is not as bad as people say. So Reverend Morris comes along, Department of Information, they give me a ring. He was a man of religion. So he was to be brought to the masjid, the Juma Masjid Durban. It's also a, a landmark in Durban. It's the largest mosque south of the equator. On Fridays, we got 4,000, a congregation of 4,000 musallis. 4,000 on Fridays. And it's right in the center of the city. The architecture is Mughal architecture. So they phoned me, said, look, we have Reverend Dr. Morris. And he's coming on a certain day. Will you be prepared to take him around and explain to him what goes on? Oh, so it's a privilege for us. So I, Reverend Dr. Morris, his wife, and a lady from the Department of Information, they came on Juma day, and I explained to them what happens. And then since it was lunchtime, I said, look, uh, if you don't mind, you know, I can take you all for lunch. So he's looking at the lady of the Department of Information, says, we have no lunch appointment. She says, no. I said, look, come. So I take them to the Golden Peacock. It's in Durban. Not in Iran. Yeah, in Durban. Golden Peacock. <laughs> so I order four biryanis. You know what biryani is. That's one of our most delicious dishes. And we sit down and we start chatting about God and about religion. And Mrs. Morris is staring at me. And I says, what is this you two, you know, carrying on? So I said, Madam, what do you expect us to do? You see, when two hairdressers meet, they talk about hairstyles. <laughs> when the shoemakers meet, they talk about shoes. When men of religion meet, they talk about God, naturally. But to the reverend, I'm suggesting to him, I says, you know, we Muslims, we believe that Jesus Christ was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We know, we believe that he was the Messiah. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission. And he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. He said, we are going together. I said, the only real point of difference between us is that we say he's not God and he's not his son, not the begotten son of God. Metaphorically, we are all his children, the good and the bad. But physically, God does not beget. So our only point of real difference between the Muslim and the Christian is that we say Jesus is not God and you say he is God. And I said, for that, you have no authority. There is nowhere in the Bible where Jesus says, I'm God, or where he says, worship me. The same, same, same. I said, there is nowhere in the Bible where he says that I and God Almighty are one and the same thing. So when I said that, the last phrase, that I, Jesus, and God Almighty are one and the same thing. It tickled his memory. This is a human behavior. This is how memories get tickled. You know, some word is used, which you already have something like that uh, in your mind, and this word tickles the other one. So when I said, nowhere where he says, him and God Almighty are one and the same thing. So. He had been reading the Bible. He is a reverend, DD, Doctor of Divinity. So he said, no, there is. I said, what? He said, Jesus did say, I and my father are one. I said, yes. Yes, he did say that. That I, that's Jesus, and father means God, are one. So I'm asking him, 
what is the context? So he's staring at me. I said, you know, what you quoted is the text. John chapter 10, verse 30. That is the text. I would like you to give me the context, the text that goes with it, before or after. So he's staring at me. The biryani is waiting. <laughs> so he's asking me. You know, usually it happens. I, it happened in the city hall, Cape Town. You know. When I asked, what is the context, a preacher of the DRC, he had the Bible under his arm, he started opening, I say, hey, put that Bible away. You quoting a verse, surely you know what you're talking about, in what sense it was used. What are you opening the book for? And you're claiming you've got the spirit in you. So before it was out with you, now it's in you. I said, let the spirit speak now. No, the spirit deserts them. Without the book, utterly helpless by God, I tell you. You saw last night something. They must, they prepare at home, make notes. They bring somebody's magazine. That is all that they're asking. I said, look, one and a half hour, what were you listening? Not one question. What homework they did at home, they bring that here. The night before, same. In the city hall, same. They bring, what they write at home, they bring it. I said, one and a half hour, you're listening. What are you listening? Where is this Holy Ghost? Why is it deserting you people? Come out with it. And doesn't the Holy Ghost help you to think or to remember? Nothing. Put down the, and you watch. As soon as they say, put the book away. Talk. I want you to talk to me. And you see, finished. You punctured him. You punctured the guy. As, say, put the book down, man. Talk. You are a professional. This is your job. Why can't you talk and tell me what you have to offer? Talk. I don't want you to start reading things to me. Encyclopedias. So he said, do you know the context? I said, of course I know the context. So what is the context? He's asking me. He is a DD. I was a D-dat. <laughs> so I said, start. John, chapter 10, verse 23. It reads, I'm reading from memory, you know. <laughs> you know though we don't claim it, it looks like we have got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and Jesus walked in Solomon's porch, meaning in the temple of Jerusalem. The man is alone. You know, he has been condemning these Jews. According to the scriptures, using vitriolic language, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchers, you hypocrites, you wicked and adulterous generation. Look, when you talk like that, somebody's got it in for you. And the Jews are not the people who will forgive you in a hurry. So he's alone. So they... A man is walking alone, so they go up to him. Then came the Jews, round about him and surrounded him, and said, How long does thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. You know, brandishing a finger in his face. Look, you know, wanting to start a fight. This is not asking question. Actually, they want to pick up a fight. They say, look, you know, the way he has been condemning, no, he's talking about that. He said, but now we give him a good bashing. He's alone. Fix him up. Slot him. <laughs> give it to him. He says, if thou be the Christ, tell us plainly, man. That means you're talking ambiguously. Why don't you put your claim clear enough that you are the Messiah we're waiting for? Verse 25. So Jesus answered them. He said, I told you. I told you. And ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they be witness of me. Verse 26. But ye believe not. Ye are not of my sheep, means my followers. You're not my followers. As I said unto you, 27. My sheep hear my voice, mean my followers, they listen to me. And I know them and they follow me. Verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man.